Good evening. Welcome to our midweek meeting here at Little Hill Church. It's always good to be able to open God's word together. That's what we're going to be doing this evening. We're carrying on looking at these names and titles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week we looked at him being the bridegroom and our name, our title for the Lord Jesus that we're looking at together this evening is found in the very last chapter of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. So um, if you want to make sure you've got your Bible ready, but before we, we read that passage, let's just commit our time to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, it's always good to come together around your word, to come and open up the Bible and to read what's written here for us. Thank you that you are the author of the scriptures, and that your word is true from beginning to end. It's perfect and complete. It has everything that we need for life and godliness. And we pray that as we look into your word this evening, we would hear your voice speaking. We pray your Holy Spirit would come and help us and give us understanding that our minds would be ready and alert and prepared. And that you would open our hearts as well to receive this word with faith and with real gratitude and thanks that you are the God who speaks. So please would you come and be with us. Bless our time, we pray as we consider more about our Lord Jesus Christ. And here as we ask in his precious name. Amen. Well, please do turn to Revelation chapter 22. We're going to read most of the chapter, starting at verse 6 right to the end. So that's Revelation 22, starting at verse 6, going to the end. This is the Apostle John, remember, writing from the Isle of Patmos. And he said to me, that's the angel who was with him. These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoers still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. Well, in this passage that we've just read in, in Revelation 22, there are different names given to the Lord Jesus Christ. But the one we're looking at is found in verse 16, where uh, the Lord Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. 
And it's that title that we're looking at together this evening, The Bright Morning Star. Most mornings I take our dog Rory for a walk and I, I try to go before it gets busy. And, and just as the children are getting up, I go about half past six. And now that it's, uh, it's staying darker in the mornings, it's dark when I leave. And as I go out and look up, if it's been clear overnight, you can see the stars. But one of the stars that I've I've been looking out for and, and I've seen this morning, yesterday morning as well, is the morning star. And if you look towards the east, uh, towards the horizon, uh, if you're a, a couple of hours before the sun's coming up, you will see the morning star. It's very bright. You, you almost can't miss it this morning. It was particularly bright. And it tells us that the night is nearly over, that the day is almost here, that it's almost time for darkness to be banished for another few hours. Although those hours of um, light and, and daytime are, are getting fewer as the nights draw in. But the, the morning star is the promise of the dawn, isn't it? If you see that morning star there, I think it's the planet Venus. If you see the, the morning star, you know that it's going to be uh, the daytime soon. And these themes of light and darkness and day and night are, are there throughout uh, the scriptures. And they're used in God's word to demonstrate the contrast and the conflict between God and his ways as opposed to sin and Satan and what's evil and wicked. And Jesus being the bright and morning star gives his people hope as they're involved in this conflict and this struggle too. Jesus saying, I am the bright morning star is a message of hope and encouragement. And it's very clear in verse 16 that it's speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. During the, uh, the, the book of Revelation, as John's been writing it, sometimes it's the angel speaking to him. Sometimes it's John's observations on what he's seeing. Other times it's the Lord speaking to him. But it's very clear in verse 16 of this chapter that we've read that it's the Lord Jesus. It says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you. I am the root and the descent of, De of David, the bright morning star. I, Jesus, am the bright morning star. It's very clearly the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is this hope? What is this hope? Well, remember the whole of Revelation was written to give hope to God's people. They were facing great persecution. Those letters in the early chapters of Revelation in chapters two and three, they, they detail for us churches that are facing big problems, persecution, opposition, weakness and yet the Lord is with his people and he wants to encourage them and that encouragement carries forward through the centuries to God's people today to us even today as we look at this together now this is the hope that we have our Lord Jesus Christ and the first thing that the bright morning star reminds us of as we think about the Lord Jesus Christ is that the night is nearly over the night is nearly over we can often find nighttime hard perhaps that's when we feel most lonely if we live on our own it's the time when you seem to hear every creak and, and thump in the house isn't it or maybe when you're unwell it's always harder at night time i know if i've had a heavy cold i feel rotten when it's time to go to bed and it can be hard to get to sleep maybe all the pressure of the day is is still there and, and you find it hard to rest and you're trying to work it all out and tossing and turning it's a frightening time sometimes. We can be afraid of the dark. If we find ourselves in unfamiliar places and it's dark, well, sometimes that can be a frightening experience for us. But spiritually, the Bible has a lot to say about darkness in a spiritual sense. It's often a reference to judgment. Think of Exodus chapter 10 and that, that plague of darkness on uh, the land of Egypt because of Pharaoh's stubborn heart to refusing to let God's people go think of what the Lord Jesus says about those who in the great judgment will be cast out into darkness a place of judgment it's also uh, used to refer to gloom and despair let me take you to the book of Job and chapter 10 just listen to what Job says in in, in chapter 10, uh, some verses from 18 to the end of the chapter. Why did you bring me out from the womb? He says to the Lord, what would that I had died before and I had seen me and were as though I had not been carried from the womb to the grave. 
Are not my days for you? They cease and leave me alone, that I may find a little cheer before I go. And I shall not return to the land of darkness and deep shadow, the land of gloom like thick darkness, like deep shadow without any order, where light is as thick darkness. Often the darkness can refer to the gloom and despair, but also to death here as Job speaks. It can mean a lack of spiritual wisdom and an understanding or knowledge. And we read in Proverbs that the way of the wicked is like deep darkness there in Proverbs chapter four. And the night, the night brings fear, doesn't it? Psalm 91 verse five tells us that because God is our shelter, we do not need to fear the terrors of night. Again, in the Psalms, weeping may remain for a night. And that uh, account in John's gospel, when the Lord Jesus shares the Last Supper as Judas leaves uh, to go and betray the Lord Jesus. John records that little detail, doesn't he? And it was night. The wicked things happen at night. That's why Jesus said men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. But the night is nearly over. The night is nearly over. It feels like our world is falling deeper into spiritual night and darkness, doesn't it? The aggressive agendas that are being pushed and the, the way that it seems our society is running away from the truth of God's word and, and from reality in many ways. And you kind of stop and have a look at all that's going on and you're left asking the question, could it get any darker than this? Could it be any worse? And we're not at home as the Lord's people in this darkness, are we? In this night. Paul writing to the Thessalonian Christians, he tells them, you are all children of the light. You are children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. And we don't belong in the night. We don't belong in the darkness. We long for day to come. We rejoice at the Lord Jesus Christ, the bright morning star. He has defeated the darkness, hasn't he, by his death and his resurrection. The light of the world has risen. And John writes in the opening chapter of his gospel that the darkness could not overcome this light. So the bright morning star gives us hope that the night is nearly over. Hard as it's been, hard as it is, the night is nearly over. And secondly, the day is almost here. The day is almost here. How different it is when the sun comes up. We often feel better and fresh when we see the sun coming through the curtains in the morning. We feel confident. We don't have that same fear, do we? Because the day has come. The sun is up. We can see. And spiritually as well, like we looked at with the darkness. The light speaks of life. In him was life and the life was the light of man. It's, it's something that often refers to spiritual wisdom and understanding and knowledge, especially coming from the word of God. The entrance of your word gives light. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. It speaks of our fellowship with God, who is light. If we are walking in the light, we're having fellowship with him and, and with each other. It's all that is good and right and true. And Jesus is himself, isn't he, the light of the world. And let's just have a look at some verses in Ephesians chapter 5 about what we have in him and this theme of light. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 9. For at one time, Paul writes, you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. We are light in the Lord. And the day has come. The day is almost here. When we read of the day in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and it speaks of the day, it's speaking of the day of the Lord, isn't it? In the prophets, they speak of the day of the Lord that will come and, and being ready for the day of the Lord. The time when Christ will return as the New Testament sheds more light on that. The Apostle Paul speaks of it when he writes to the Philippians about the one who's begun a good work in you. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it at the day of Jesus Christ. And later on in the same chapter, he speaks of the day of Christ. It's pointing us to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that eternal day dawns with 
his return. That's what this whole passage in Revelation is about. The return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Three times he says, I am coming soon. And he's the one who is coming back. He is the bright morning star. And here's what's wonderful. The greatest encouragement about all of this is Jesus himself is the promise of his return. In the same way, the bright morning star is the promise of the morning coming. That dawn is is nearly here. It's just around the corner. Jesus himself being the bright morning star is the promise of his return. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. And there were some glimmers of this when he came the first time. Think of what Isaiah says in chapter nine about the people who were walking in darkness would see a great light. Or John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, when he's naming his son, John, and he, he gives that wonderful outburst of praise. And he, he speaks of the Lord Jesus who would come and he speaks of the sunrise visiting us from above. There'd always already been a glimmer of, of this light, of this hope in his first advent. But Jesus gives this promise to his people. He gives this promise of his return to his people. It's a promise for them. It's a promise for us. And in Revelation chapter two, in one of the letters, we read those very words. That very thought is expressed in the letter to the church in Thyatira in Revelation chapter two. And let me read from verse 25 down to the end. Only hold fast what you have until I come. The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron, as when earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as I myself have received authority from my father. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus gives his people the promise of his return, the promise of that eternal day that's coming. What an encouragement that is. And this day that's coming that the morning star heralds is not like other days. You see, when the Lord Jesus recreates the heavens and the earth, when there is the new heavens and the new earth, this day will not be followed by night as has always happened before. Think back to Genesis 1. When God creates everything, each of those days, the pattern is set, isn't it? There was evening and morning the first day, evening and morning the second day. Uh, day was followed by night. And in the promise to Noah after the flood, uh, God says that day and night will never cease, shall not cease. But this new day will have no night. This day when Christ returns will not be followed by night. In, in the, the verses preceding what we've read this evening, that's repeated twice, this encouragement. And there will be no more night, nothing of the night, nothing of the darkness, nothing of those wicked ways and, and, and evil things that were happening in the darkness and in the night. It will all be a thing of the past. It will have all have been judged and dealt with. And this time that the Lord Jesus returns, we will see him come. We will see him come. And this is the third and the last point, really. We, you can't miss the sunrise, can you? You can't miss the sunrise. And imagine if you're on a plane, you're going somewhere and you're flying above the clouds. The sky's perfectly clear. It's even harder to miss it then as you see the sun shining in all of its brilliance. But it will be even more impossible to miss the return of the king. And that's what. It will be, it will be the return of the king. The bright morning star speaks to us some truths about who the Lord Jesus Christ is as well, that he is royalty, he's the king. Remember back in the book of Numbers in chapter 24, there's that promise. Balaam is giving his oracle and he says these words in Numbers 24, 17. A star will come out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. He's speaking of the, the king and his birth being heralded by the star. That's the star the wise men saw. And in Matthew's gospel, we, we know they go to Jerusalem and they ask, where is he who's been born, king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose in the east and we've come to worship him. 
We know the Lord Jesus himself has said that he's the root and offspring of David, of King David. He's the king. He's the greater king. He's the greatest king. But as well as that, he's a glorious king. He's a glorious king. He's the bright morning star. That word bright kind of reminds us of brilliance and shining uh, brighter than anything else. He, he's the brightest star in the sky, as it were. What does John see at the beginning of this revelation when he turns to look at the one who's speaking to him? He describes him as having a face burning like the sun in all its strength. And when the disciples, Peter, James and John, see the Lord Jesus transfigured, again, he, he, they describe it as him shining like the sun. This is our Lord Jesus Christ, our glorious King, the bright morning star. One of the great wonders about this, glorious and majestic as he is, is that we will share it with him too. We will share it with him too. Right near the end of the book of Daniel, in chapter 12 and verse 3, we read these words. Those who are wise, that's wise to salvation, shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The Lord Jesus himself says of his people that the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. And we know that when he appears, the bright morning star, when he appears, we shall be like him because we'll see him as he is. We're going to be made like him. We're going to shine like him for all eternity. What a wonderful encouragement. What wonderful hope. Do you know, as we apply this to ourselves today, we don't enjoy the struggles, do we? Or the long night. We find it hard in the dark, as it were, in this world. And the night that seems to be drawn out. Maybe again, thinking of Job, maybe these words could be true of us. What Job says uh, earlier in, in chapter 7. Like a slave who longs for the shadow and like a hired hand who looks for his wages. So I am allotted months of emptiness and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? But the night is long and I am full of tossing till the dawn. The night seems long, doesn't it? We want the night to be over. We want the day to come. We want all that's wrong with the world to be put right. But Jesus, the bright morning star, says right at the end of that chapter in Revelation, I am coming soon hold on hold fast keep going the day is almost here keep going the day is almost here and so let's finish with a challenge from the apostle paul the night is far gone the day is at hand so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light the bright morning star promises that the dawn is not far away jesus the lord jesus christ is the bright morning star he is the promise of his return and he will come soon because he said and he will bring that eternal day where there will be no more night and we will shine with him what a future we have and what a hope he gives to us well, in a few minutes time, we'll be able to join uh, each other for prayer on the Zoom prayer meeting. I encourage you to get along to that if you can. Uh, it'd be good to see you there. But let's just finish our time now um, with, with prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for what we've been able to look at together. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ is the bright morning star. We thank you. He's the promise of that eternal day that's coming that he's the son of righteousness who's risen with healing in his wings and we long for that day when we see him return when he brings that sunrise from above as it were for forever and ever when there will be no more night no more darkness lord our god we pray we would be encouraged by these things help us to hold fast as your word is encouraged us to keep going in the struggles through the darkness and through the night uh, holding on to that hope that he is coming soon and so as we end this time now we would echo john's words even so come quickly lord jesus bless us and we pray do as good we humbly ask 
as we look to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.